Okay, how you doing? <clears throat> so basically this is a common problem you'll see is uh, finding a missing coordinate. Uh, these finding missing coordinates problems. Uh, teachers like to use these to test, uh, you know, slope formula uh, problems. Um, but anyhow, I'm going to show you three different ways to do this problem. And hopefully one of those uh, ways you like and makes sense to you and that you can go ahead and use. Um, so basically you'll see a problem like this. If I know the slope of a line is three-fifths, and that line also passes through the points x, the unknown coordinate, comma three, and 15, comma negative nine, what must the value of x be? The first way that I'm about to show this to you is a universal way of doing this problem. Um, and you can do it any way you want, regardless of the x or the y. Uh, you'll be just solving at the end. So basically, first things first is, I notice in this problem the things I'm going to pick out are this. Okay, the first thing I'm going to pick out is that I have a slope of three fifths and I have a point. Well, if I have a slope and I have a point, I can write the equation of a line. And why is it that I want to write the equation of a line? Well, if I have the equation of a line, by plugging points into that equation or plugging values into that equation, I can then figure out other parts of the coordinates. So this is how we're going to do it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write the equation of the line of y equals mx plus b. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fill in. So we're going to fill in with this particular slope and this point to figure out what the b is. Because the only thing out of all of these problems that I don't know is b. And why is it that I don't know what b is? Well, b, we need to remember, okay, is the coordinate pair of 0 comma b. Unfortunately, none of these come as 0, comma b, so I'm out of luck in that case. So what I'm going to do is, much like I've done many of my other videos of solving to write the equation of the line, I'm just going to follow suit. So here we go. We go ahead and plug in. So the y that I can plug in is negative 9. The m that I can plug in is 3 fifths. The x that I can plug in is 15. And what I'm left with is an equation with b left in it. So now I can actually solve for this b. So I do negative 9 equals 3 fifths times 15. If you know how to do this mentally, all you do is you do the 15 here. Okay, so I'll give you a little mental math tricks. 15 divided by 5 is 3. Times that by 3, you end up with 9. So 9 plus this b. The next thing I do is my property of equality, which is minus 9, minus 9, and I'm left with negative 18 is now equivalent to b. So why is this important? Because the equation of the line is now y equals 3 fifths x minus 18. So from here, it's just a matter of, well, if I want to know the unknown coordinate, I can now use this equation to figure out that unknown x. Because now, this coordinate allows me to leave one of the variables in the problem, the one I don't know, but it also allows me to replace one of the other ones to help me have only one variable. So here we go. What we can do is we place the 3 in for y. We get 3 fifths x minus 18. So start solving. So plus 18, plus 18, property of equality here. So I'm left with 21 equals 3 fifths x. So again, you could at this point divide if you're a fan of dividing. I am not a fan of division if I have fractions because dividing by a fraction we should all know is multiplying by the reciprocal. So I just jump right to that multiplication of reciprocal. Again, if you don't want to or you don't understand what I'm doing here, you can just go the route of typing 21 divided by 3 fifths in your calculator, and the calculator will do what I'm doing for you. Okay, so 21 divided by 3 is 7, so 5 and 7 makes 35, and then 35 is equivalent to x. So there we go. I have my unknown coordinate. The value of x must be 35, and then I'm done. So that's method number one. Okay, so method number one is finding the equation from a slope and a point. So that's method one. If you like that method, it's a valid method, very easy to do, because if I had just had the, uh, the x-coordinate and I didn't have the y, it's just a matter of filling in for the y and then solving for the x. So it's a universal one, you can use it for both of them, uh, and it's great practice at writing the equation of the line. So on to the next one. 
So same exact problem, not going to switch it up. I'm just going to show you how it can be done a little bit differently. So the other way you can do this, which is a common way that this one is actually taught. Uh, so if this is confusing to you, uh, the first method, but you'll understand this one. So, uh, or I've seen this one probably. This is the, probably the most common one I can think of that people use to teach with. So what people will say to you is that you have two points and you have a slope. Just use the slope formula. So m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So what they're going to say to you is fill everything you can in and then go from there. So they're going to tell you to solve this with an equation just like such. So if you like this method, here we go. So the m is 3 fifths. So what you need to know is that the 3 fifths in the problem is the slope. So I write 3 fifths in place of m equals. So one of the things you need to remember is y2, y1, or x2, x1. You just need to remember that if I have this particular problems, okay, that you need to label one of these point 0.1 and one of these point 0.2. So I'm going to go ahead and label this point 0.1. So I know that the second one over here is my point 0.2. So I fill it in correctly. So here we go. So my fraction. So when I fill this in, I like filling the coordinate over top of one another. So I fill the negative 9, and then I fill the 15. Okay, and then the next thing I do is I don't write the minus sign. I'm a fan of actually just writing the problem in, the coordinates in, so I write the 3 in, then I write the x in, and then after this, I will put the sign that's supposed to go in between them, which is a subtraction, okay? Why I like this, this helps me with if I have double negatives to make sure I don't mess up or anything like that. Okay, so now from here, it's just a matter of doing some cleanup work before we move forward. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to... Uh, go ahead and move this information over here. So all my cleanup. So I'm going to go 3 fifths is equivalent to negative 12 divided by 15 minus x. All right, so at this point, what you're left with is now you're left with a proportion. So why is it that this is a little bit harder for some people? It's because now this requires you to do a little bit, have a little bit more solid skills of solving equations. So when I solve equations, what I need to know is that I can never have a variable in the denominator, so I need to get the variable out of a denominator. And the only way you can get something out of a denominator is actually to multiply an equation by the denominator itself, and that will rid me of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce multiplication. I'm going to go 15 minus x. So there's that. And what that will do, we'll take care of on this side. We just need to remember that equations, okay, what I do to one side, I must do to the other. So I'm going to put that 15 minus x over here as well. So what I'm now left with is this 3 times this group of 15 minus x all over 5 being equivalent to negative 12. Uh, and now I just want you to know I, I'm doing this by baby steps, but I could have done multiply by 5 at the same time. Uh, which some of you know this is called cross multiplication. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply by 5 across here. Um, so when I do that, I get 3 times 15 minus x is now equivalent to, well, 5 times negative 12. So if you want me to share that times 5, that takes care of that times 5. And now I've got negative 60. So now from here, okay, so if you notice this method confuses a lot of people because I've already done a lot of from here statements. Um, so at this point, now what I would do is I would solve this like any normal equation in algebra 1 with the distributive property. So 3 times 15 is 45. 3 times negative x is negative 3x. That is equivalent to negative 60. So I would do properties of equality, minus 45, minus 45. I've got negative 3x is now equivalent to negative 105. Divide both sides by negative 3, and I get x again, okay, I'll get x equals 35. So either way, that's way number 2. So way number 2 is one of the more common ways, because teachers like to see you, if you, or try to use this as a refresher for uh, solving equations. So that was method 2. Method 2 is using the... Uh, slope formula. Method one was writing the equation, plugging in, going from there. And then we have yet one last method. So the last method here is going to be kind of like a, I don't know if you, it's a table, called the table method. So the table method is going through and instead of trying to visually figure out or have all of that big long equation like before, what I can do is I can make the previous slope equation a little less so that it's not so much. We do it in pieces. So this is what I mean. The first thing we're going to do 
is we're going to make a table. The table, we're going to go x, comma, y, and we're going to fill in our coordinates. So x3, so while it may seem weird that you're putting an x there, you're going to go ahead and put an x there. And then you're going to go 15, negative 9. So there's my points, okay? So <clears throat> a couple things that we have here is that I know that my rate of change, which is m, is equivalent to the change of the y values divided by the change of the x values. So we're going to use a little bit different notation. Okay, so what we do here is kind of very simple. Uh, instead of using a formula, most people can probably say uh, how much it is to get from th to 3 to negative 9. If you can't, you subtract up the table. So what I mean by that is you take negative 9, subtract 3, so you'll end up getting that 3 minus 12 gives you negative 9. And then the next thing over here is, well, that's an unknown, so that's delta x, all right? So what I know is that m is equal to delta y over delta x, but I already know that my m is equivalent to 3 fifths, okay? So now one of the things we need to know about slope is this thing about that slope is proportional. So no matter what points I use or what fractions I create, that my fractions better all reduce down to the same exact thing. So what we are given in these problems is generally we are given the simplified form of the slope. So what I now have is a problem that states this negative 12 over this delta x. So the slope of this unknown thing is negative 12 divided by delta x because it's the change in y over 12 over x. So what this now gives me is it gives me 3 fifths. Okay, that will have to reduce to 3 fifths. So what I can do here, which makes it a little bit nicer, is I don't have that all that work I had in the previous slide. So basically what this method is kind of attempting to do is to make the yuckiness on the other slide go away. So what we can do here is proportion. So we can utilize cross multiplication if we want. So what we end up getting is 3 is now or 3 times delta x is equivalent to negative 60 because negative 12 times 5. So then from here, I can go ahead and just simply divide by 3, divide by 3, and I get delta x is equivalent to negative 20. So why is that important? Okay, when I go back to the table, to get from my x coordinate to this 15, I would subtract 20. So what does x minus 20, okay, so this is how we would do this, we would say x minus 20 will have to equal 15. So I would think most of us at this point could do mental math. If not, if you need the step for it, you can go plus 20 plus 20, and you get your final answer as x equals 35, and then you're done. All right, so that's the last method I can think of for these particular problems. Uh, sorry if it wasn't nice and flowing, uh, but that's the last method.